Hi everyone, in this problem we're going to do a problem involving velocity. So a projectile is shot upward from the surface of the Earth uh, with initial velocity 100 meters per second and we're given the position uh, at time t in meters. This is the position, I should write that, uh, in meters of this projectile. And we're going to answer uh, various questions. So part A Let's find the velocity after two seconds. So velocity after two seconds. So we'll find the velocity after two seconds. So to find the velocity after two seconds, we have to work with the position function. Let's think about what's happening uh, in the problem. So here's the Earth, okay, and there's a projectile and it's going up from the surface of the Earth uh, with initial velocity 100 meters per second. And so it does something like this, and it creates some parabolic shape, right? And then it hits the ground. So the initial velocity is 100 meters per second. So we know that V sub 0 is the initial velocity. So V sub 0 is equal to 100. That's because it's going up. If it was going down, it would be negative 100. S sub 0 is the initial position. So in this case, since it's being shot from the surface of the Earth, it should be 0. So now we can go ahead and rewrite our position function. So S of t is equal to negative 4.9 t squared. And we said v naught was 100, so plus 100 t. And then S0 is 0, so everything looks okay. So again, V0 is the initial velocity, S0 is the initial position. Okay, so we want the velocity. Well, the velocity is the derivative of the position function. So all we do is take the derivative, so S prime of t, and this is equal to, let's see, 2 times negative 4.9. It's going to be negative 9.8 t. And then the derivative of 100t is just 100. So this is the derivative of position. This is the velocity. So this is v of t. This is the velocity after t seconds or at t seconds. It's the instantaneous rate of change, right? Instantaneous rate of change. Okay. So it's the instantaneous velocity. You can think of it that way. All right, so now um, we have to plug in 2, and that's it. And that's it. That's, it's that simple, I guess. So v of 2 is negative 9.8 times 2 plus 100. And I suppose you could do this in your head, but I do have a calculator nearby. Let's see, negative 9.8 times 2 plus 100. Uh, I got 80.4, 80.4. And the units are meters per second for velocity, right? So, and that would be the velocity after two seconds. Let's do a harder problem now. Let's, let's make it hard. Let's, let's raise the bar, B. Let us find the maximum height of the projectile. So max height of projectile. So the maximum height of the proje projectile. <laughs> All right, so we have to find how high it goes, right? So there are three ways to do this, I believe, that I can think of off the top of my head. Method one is using intuition. That's really, really cool, and I'm leaning towards um, taking that approach. It's really clever and beautiful. So method one is intuition. Method two is just using uh, basic algebra, right? Um, this is the vertex, uh, only, yeah, yeah, this is the position function. I made sure I circled the right thing. So this is the position. So using basic algebra, so this is the vertex of a parabola, right? And so you could use the formula uh, negative b over 2a, f of negative b over 2a, and you would use it on a t squared plus b t plus c. So you would, you would find your a, b, and c. I've never done it in this problem. So here A is negative 4.9 and, and B is 100. And that would be your X coordinate. And then you plug that into your Y coordinate, so into, into, into your function to get your Y coordinate. So you could do it with algebra. Method two, you could take the derivative and set it equal to zero and find your critical number. 
and uh, you know use the first derivative test or the oh actually we actually we haven't done that yet, um, so you can't do it that way. So you, the only way so far that we've learned how to do this is using basic algebra. But once you know more calculus, uh, you can use calculus to do it. Anyways, let's do it the coolest way possible, in my opinion. Let's use intuition. So let me draw the picture again down here. This is really exciting. So, so we're looking for the maximum, right? So let's think about this. Let me use a different color. So the projectile is going up. There's a little projectile. It's moving along. Right now it has a positive, positive velocity. Remember, the velocity is the derivative of position. So the velocity is the slope of the tangent line, right? That's what's happening here, right? So it's positive, positive, positive. And then it gets to the top. There's the velocity. Then it's negative. So it's going to be at a maximum when the slope of the tangent line is zero. In other words, when it's stopped, right? It's going up, 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 and then it stops at the very top, and then it starts to fall. So it's gonna, that's going to happen when the velocity is zero. So it's at a maximum when the velocity is zero, right? Remember, the velocity is the derivative of a position. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So you want the tangent line to be horizontal because horizontal lines have a slope of zero. In other words, horizontal lines uh, would give us a derivative equal to zero, so velocity equal to zero. So it goes up, 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 it stops. That's when the velocity is equal to zero, then it comes down. So this is when it's going to be at a max. So it's at, at a max when this is true. So what is V of t? Well, you just replace it with negative 9.8t plus 100. Set that equal to zero. And then subtract 100. So you get negative 9.8t equals negative 100. So t equals uh, 100 over 9.8. I'm going to put this in my calculator. So 100 over 9.8 is about 10.2, 10.2 seconds, roughly. So that's when it takes 10.2 seconds to reach a max. Wow. Huh. So it went pretty high up. So how high did it go? Well, all we do now is we plug this into our position function. Recall the position function was s of t equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 100 t. So now we just take this and plug it in. So that will be s of 10.2 equals negative 4.9, uh, and then 10.2 squared plus 100t, uh, which is 10.2. And let me put this uh, in my calculator. Let's see, it's going to be uh, negative 4.9 times 10.2 squared plus 100 times 10.2. Okay, I got 510.2 roughly, so approximately equal to 510.2, and the units were meters. That's pretty high up there. So that's going to be the maximum um, height of the projectile. So uh, kind of interesting. Part C. Part C, let's find. Um, let's do one more. Find the speed speed after 13 seconds. Why not? It's a long video, but if you're still with me, that's awesome. We're going to do one more interesting problem. So to find the speed, uh, we have to take the absolute value of velocity. So we know that our velocity function is negative 9.8t plus 100. Okay. So all we have to do now is plug in 13 and take the absolute value because speed is the absolute value of velocity. So V of 13 is negative 9.8 times 13 plus 100. So this is going to be negative 9.8 times 13 plus 100. Negative 27.4. That makes sense, right? Because if you think about what's happening, um, it reaches a max at 10.2 seconds, so this is 10.2. And so now, 13 seconds is over here, so the velocity is negative because it's going down, right? So we want the, the speed, so the speed is the absolute value of this. So you just, you just take the absolute value of that and just make it positive. So it's going to be 27.4 uh, meters per second, right, meters per second. So that would be um, the uh, speed. So I hope this video uh, has been helpful. That's it.